Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, and we're going to begin at verse number 1. When we're going to conclude at verse number 10, we'd like to thank everyone that participated in the devotional part of our service thus far. God is good, and God is good. And you can't see him, but I want to let you know he's here and I missed on this morning. Preacher, how you know that? He said, well, two or three are gathered together in my name, touching and agreeing on anything. He said, there am I in the midst of them. Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse number 1, concluding at verse number 10. The grass withers, and the flower thereof shall fade away, but the word of God shall stand forever. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I bring us to this place on this morning because I wanted to say something that all of us would be able to relate to. Um, There are certain things that you preach and certain things that you say that it may bless some people because they've been through that a time or two and they are able to appreciate what it is that you're saying. And then you may have some others that say, well, you know, I've never experienced that, so that doesn't really apply to me, that doesn't really affect me. But I know all of us at some point in your life have been down on your luck. All of us at some point in life have found ourselves by life circumstances knocked on on our knees and we're needing somebody to help us up. All of us at some point have been the lame man waiting for somebody to come by and pick us up. We're going to get there. Let let me go here. Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse number 1. And the Bible says it this way. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to him. Will you help me up? Amen. Will you help me up? He was used to being lame. He was used to being carried. He was used to sitting at the same place while other people were walking around. And he was used to begging. That, that's a terrible thing to get used to begging. It's, it's, more, it's more than having money or not having money, but it's a mindset kind of thing. It's a, it's a gimme mentality. You ever met anybody like that? My, my name is Jimmy, and you ought to give me. And everybody who doesn't give me is something wrong with them because I'm used to living off the benevolence of other people. And, and, and no, don't give me a job. Just give me, don't give me something to help because I'm used to just getting over because I got a begging mentality. Peter and John came by at the hour of prayer. And there he was sitting watching the traffic go by. And they thought this was just another passerby. Just like some of you, you think that this is just, you know, just a, a Sunday morning and I got up, you know, am I going to go to church this morning or am I not going to go to church this morning? I don't, and you know, we're, and you know I got to get my coffee this morning, I got to get my outfit laid out, I got to get ready, am I going to church? You know, sometimes we get used to a schedule and we get used to a program and sometimes God puts something along in our path that disrupts what we got going on because God said, you know what, I want to get your attention right now because I got something that I need for you to do. 
You know, I'm thankful to be a member of this church. I'm, I'm thankful to be a member of this church. Why do you say that, preacher? I think I'm a, a member of a great body of believers. I believe that. Not saying that other churches don't have great people, but I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying we're the only one, but you know, it's so important to go to a place. You might not know, you know, exactly how things are going to go, but you ought to know that you are going to a place where you are going to be able to worship the Lord. You ought to be able to know that you are going to a place where somebody's going to be preaching to you what thus said the Lord. You ain't got to worry about whether is that right, is that correct. Do I have to go behind him and check? But you know that they are preaching to you the unsearchable riches of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you that as a preacher, I, I don't know it's always going to happen, but I don't know about y'all, but as I'm in my car on the way to the house of God, my mind is stayed on Jesus and I recognize that you got issues. I got issues. We all are dealing with stuff. We didn't just start having problems when COVID-19 came here. Some of y'all been experiencing problems all throughout your life. And you recognize, say, I got problems in my own life. But when I come into the house of God, it's not about my problem. It's not about my worries. I come into the house of God to lift up and praise his name. He said in his word that you ought to enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving. And that you ought to come into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. I'm worried, but I'm still thankful. I got issues, but I'm still thankful to be in God's house. Yes. Come on, preacher. Come on now. I'm thankful to be in God's house. And I don't, I'm not like, I'm not like the, if I ever become like the lame man and I need somebody to carry me around, I don't need nobody to carry me somewhere where nothing is happening. I don't want you to carry me anywhere where nothing is going on. I don't want to be taken to a cemetery before my time. I want to be taken somewhere where the word of God is alive. Yes. And you can tell that Jesus is working within the midst of people by the life that they live and by how they carry themselves. I would have you to know that there are, are three stages that this man went through. He goes through, first of all, what we're going to call the limping stage. He goes through the limping stage. The limping stage is a stage of dysfunction, where you're just doing the best you can with what you got, just limping, just, just, just limping alone. He's been in a limping stage from his mother's womb. There is an implication that suggests that something must have happened from his mother's womb that led to the limping in his life. And isn't it funny how things in your childhood, good God Almighty, isn't it funny how things in your childhood, you're way past the womb, but you're still limping over things. And you know, it's embarrassing when you're, when you're limping over stuff that happened a long time ago because when you try to tell people that you're 55 years old and you're still hurting over something that happened when you were seven, they, they don't have sympathy for you. Everybody got sympathy for victims that have had COVID, but because it just happened. But, 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 but they better hurry up and get well quick because 20 years from now, if you're still crying over something that happened back then, people are going to say, you know, oh, child, that's over and that's done with. You ought to let that go. You ought to get on with your life. But there are some things that happen to you in life that will leave you lip. You remember when Jacob wrestled That's with that angel, That's the Bible said, all night long? And the Bible lets us know that the angel, which was a theophanic representation of Jesus Christ, touched him in his hip socket. And it said that from then on, he went the rest of his life limping. He had a lasting reminder of the encounter that he had with Jesus. And I want to know, has there been a lasting reminder in your life since you came to know Jesus? Has there been a change that has taken place in your life since you have come to know Jesus? Can you honestly say things that I used to do? Thank God I don't do them no no. Places that I used to go, thank God I don't have the desire to go there anymore. The lies I used to tell Thank God my tongue ain't built for lies no more. Thank God that a change has taken place in my life. Something on the inside working on the outside. Oh, what a change it has brought in my life. 
He was at the limping stage. He was at the limping stage, and it has affected his relationships. It has affected his money. It has affected his future. Other men his age, at that stage, they're doing more. You know, I, 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 and, and sometimes we find ourselves like that because, if truth be told, if you don't be careful, you'll get stuck in the limping stage. And you got to be real with yourself because we are people, we are so quick that when things are not going the way we expect them, first thing we want to do is throw a pity party. First thing we want to do is start, start getting upset and mad with God. You told me that you would do this, Lord. You promised me that you would do this. And let me tell you, children of God, the Lord sends storms, situations, circumstances in your life as a test of your faith. You say you love God. You say that you are a child. You say that you are a person of faith. The only way that faith can be proven is after your faith has been put to the test. Can your faith stand the test? Or do you have just enough faith for an overnight situation? Come on now. Do you just have enough faith for, well, it's troublesome right now, but in the morning it's going to be it's going to be better. But do you have faith that even when, Lord, I don't know when it's going to change. Lord, I don't know when you're going to do something. Lord, I don't know when things are going to be made better. But until you do something, Lord, I trust you. Until you change it, Lord, my faith is in you. My hope is in you. My faith is in you. My trust is in you because I know and you said in your word that you can do anything but fail. Y'all, ain't it good to know that trouble don't last always? That, that I may be experiencing a down moment right now, but eventually God is going to change. This. I'm so glad, you know, one thing about them tables, they do turn. I may be on the bad side of the table right now, but guess what? I may be on the losing end right now, but guess what? As long as I got my faith in God, as long as I'm holding on to his unchanging hand, sooner or later things are bound to turn around. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, called according to his purpose. When Peter and John came by them, check this out because sometimes we feel as though, and I know as I thought at one point, that preaching will solve everything. I was on a call just this past week with some preachers then, and they felt like that. Whatever they had going on, that, that, just, that just preaching would change it. Preaching would straighten it out, but, but, but preaching doesn't fix everything. Yeah, it's wonderful, it's great, and we need to be encouraged in the Word of God. It's great, but it doesn't fix everything. Because if preaching fixed everything, you wouldn't need to have faith. If it fixed everything, you would have no need to have faith. You can just jump up and, and, and fix it with the gift that God gave you. But there are some things that you can't fix with the gift that God gave you. That's why preaching to your unsaved friend ain't helping. That's why trying to win this person that feels as though they have no interest in God is not working because nagging and beating a person down is not going to make a person try to come any closer to God. There are just some, some situations that you have to realize, say, Lord, I can't do it, but Lord, I know that you are able. Because y'all know after a while, we get tired of working with people. We get tired of being patient with people. We get tired of trying to work with people. And when you get to that point, you got to learn how to say, God, you handle that situation. Because if you be real about it, we can't change nobody anyway. We got hard enough trying to get, get ourselves to change our plan, get ourselves to change our routine, how we do things. We got hard enough time trying to get ourselves in order. Let God handle those things that we are not able to handle. When, when I remember when, when I was younger, still young, when I was younger, and I preached this text, I used to preach it and, and say that prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. Look at that. Saying that prayer changes things. Because I thought it's not the preaching that did it, but it was the prayer. But when I, as I have gained knowledge in the word of God and I looked at it a little bit closer, it wasn't prayer either. Forgive me in this, but he didn't pray healing into this lame man. 
It was not that they came together and said, you know what, we're going to intercede and we're going to turn our place down and we're going to fast you and we're going to pray and we're going to ask God. We're going to pray over and we're going to get some oil and we're going to do this. We're going to ask God to change this situation. You're getting up out of here today, man. You're going to walk today. It wasn't like that. In fact, they didn't even pray for him at all. They challenged him. They said, in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ of Nazareth, Mm -hmm. rise up and walk. Now you have to understand, prayer is when we communicate to God. They didn't say, Father, there's a man here. They didn't waste time telling God what he already knew. They didn't speak to God at all. They spoke to the man's situation. He spoke to the man's situation and we got, what, what does the Bible tell us? He said in the place, he said, that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will be able to say, speak to this mountain, and it shall remove from you, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Do you not know that with God has given us, you have to learn to stop being afraid of situations in life and learn how to speak the word of God to the situations that we have going on in our life. We talk about it all the time, but it was powerful when our Lord was out in the wilderness and had, he was being tempted by the devil. Whenever he was met with a temptation of sin, every time he combated him with the word of God. Let me tell you, child of God, if you ever expect to be able to win the wars that we are having to fight, because the Bible lets us know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the rulers of, of, of this, the spiritual wickedness that is set up in high places. We are at war every day of our life. We are having to fight. There's a fight that we are having to face. But my question is, do you have the tools necessary to be able to win the fight? What tools do you need, preacher? Are you in the word enough that when you are faced with a trial and you are faced with a circumstance, when your adversary, the devil, that royal lion has gone out to see and devour you, do you have what you need to be able to stand in the day of testing. We need to start remembering the word of the Lord. God has made us promises in his word. And let me tell you, I don't know about anybody else, you know, sometimes, you know, with people, you know, sometimes people will make promises and, you know, you're kind of on the edge, you know, I don't know if they're going to come through with their promise or, you know, I don't know if they're not going to come, you know, why, you know, you ain't come through the last time. So, you know, this time it may not be any different, but with God, we never have to worry, we never have to fear. If God has said that he's going to be with us, we can rest assured that God is going to be with us. If God said that he would not forsake us, we can rest assured that God will not forsake us. Take us, you better hold on to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that Peter and John came by at the hour of prayer and that he commanded the lame man in the name of Jesus to rise up and walk. And the man said, well, that was good, but ain't nothing happened. What do you do? When you're praying and nothing happens. What do, you, what, what do you do when you've been praying about a situation, you've been asking God, you've been begging God to do something? What do you do when you've been asking and it seems like nothing is happening? What do you do when you've been challenged and nothing is happening? Look at this. This, this, this is a little bit off the, off the rock right here because Peter and John took him by the hand. Now, this may seem uh, radical because this man's lame. He's crippled. He's on the ground. He's a beggar. This man had not walked since he came out of his mother's belly. And they took him by the hand and lifted him up. Couldn't even lay the wall. Sometimes we got to be willing to show that we really have faith and that we really trust God to deliver us out of service. This man had never walked before a day in his life. He could just assure, man, y'all talk crazy. I don't know what. Y'all must have been in the bad wine. I don't know what y'all done had this morning. Y'all telling me that I'm going to walk. I can't walk. I don't know what it is to walk. I never walk. That's right. But they took him by the hand yeah. Yeah. and they lifted him up and this man was able to walk. The Bible says it this way. It says that immediately 
his ankle bones. They received strength. And, and just this simple word, it said that it happened immediately. That's what I love about God. It don't take God a long time when God get ready to work, when God shows up, when God get ready to change the situation. It don't take God no long extended period of time to try to get something fixed, to try to make it the better. But when God shows up on the scene, you can just rest assured that everything is going to be made better. I fixed all night last night. Did not catch anything. Today Jesus is on the ship and I caught so many fish that I had to call other folk over to help me with what I got when Jesus is on the scene. It makes a difference. Jesus makes the difference. His word makes the difference in your life. And that's why, child of God, I cannot stress it enough during this time while you are isolated from your brothers and sisters in Christ. While during this time while you're not able to come and assemble as you normally would. Stay in the word of God. Stay in prayer. Stay before the face of God. Because just because COVID-19 is here does not mean that the devil is going to take a break. And it does not mean that the devil is going to leave you alone. But during this time, he coming just a little bit harder. And you better make sure that you got enough word and that you got enough faith. As we say, you better make sure that your faith got a solid foundation. So that when the wind comes, you won't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine that comes your way. We got people looking for hope. People today are looking for a way because they don't understand what's going on. But you got to make sure that you know something about God and his word. Because while you out there, y'all know we got every kind of thing Floating around here, floating around there. Be saved by touching the TV. Be saved by touching the radio. Be saved by drinking some water out of my faucet. It ain't no better than the water that you got in your faucet. It's going to make you better. This is going to make you better. I don't know anything that can make anybody better other than the word of God. Paul said it simply this way, that the gospel is God's power to save. If it was good enough to save back then, it's good enough to save men and women alike today. It's good enough today. The first point was lifting. The second point was lifting. Now, in between the second and the third point, something happened so quick. That word we said immediately, it's, it's the same action, but it's a different source. When the lame man started getting up, he was getting up off the power of Peter and John. Because the Bible says that he took him by the hand. And lifted him up. But as he was lifted, he went from being lifted, the Bible says, to leaping. See, see, when I need help, I just need help for a few minutes. I just need help for a momentary thing. If, if, if you just give me a minute, he said, if you just give me a minute, if you can help me get up, I'll be able to do the rest. And that's what I love about God. God will help you to get to where you need to be, but then God will give you the strength to be able to sustain and to walk and to live through this life by yourself. Because to be told, so many of us, we feel as though every day that we wake up, that God is just going to have everything laid out for you. You ain't going to have no problems today. You ain't going to have no troubles today. Everything is just going to be a crystal stair. Life is going to be beautiful. Never going to experience any type of trouble. Never going to experience any type of heartache. But for anybody that has lived longer than a day, come on, you know that's not factual. You know that just because you're a Christian, just because you're a member of the body of Christ, that does not exclude you from experiencing trouble and heartache in this life. But the good thing about being a child of God and going through trouble is that you know where your help comes from is that you know where your strength comes from and that you know that when you're going through trouble, you know he who it is that you need to turn to if you expect to get help with your situation. Yes, 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 yes. Now, what I respect about this man is that when he got the chance to be lifted, he transitioned to leaping. When you move from being lifted to leaping, it's when you announce yourself, hey, I'm not going back there anymore. I'm not experiencing that anymore. All of us in your Christian journey, you have to come to a point. Because let me tell you, just because you were baptized does not mean that when you come out of the water, those old urges are not still going to be present in your life. 
Just because you were baptized doesn't that mean that when you come out of the water, you're no longer going to have a desire to do those things that you were at some point doing. But when you come out of the water, it lets you know, hey, now I'm on the right track. Now I got somebody that can help keep me on track. I got somebody that can help keep me in line because guess what? It's a daily walk. It's a daily struggle. It's a daily fight that you have to do. The devil ain't just going to fight you at one point in your life and say, oh, guess what? I didn't get him that time. I'm just going to leave him alone. But every day of your life, you are tempted. Every day of your life, you are trying in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Our patience is tested on a daily basis. Every day of our life, we are faced with a situation that brings us to the point where we have to ask the question, hey, am I going to stay faithful to God? Or am I going to fall away with the ways of the world? A a am I going to stick with what God has promised me, what God has told me to do? Or, or am I just going to fall away by the side because, you know, these things that the world has look appealing to me and what I have going on right now. Let me tell you, there's nothing that the devil and this world has to offer you that is worth you losing your soul's salvation. There is nothing in this world. There's nothing that anybody can say or do to you in this world that's worth you walking around with ill feelings and ill will towards somebody in your heart. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want anything in my life that would make a blockage, that would put a difference between me and God. I want to be at a place in my life where me and God can fellowship with one another. I want to have fellowship with God. And in order to have fellowship with God, sin cannot abound in our lives. God just can't fellowship sin. And that is why it's important that we stay in his word. That is why every day of your life that we got to do something called self-inventory. We got to look at our own life, make sure that we are meeting the mark. Stop looking across the fence and worried about what this person is doing. Looking across the fence and worried about is they doing what they're supposed to do. Hey, are you able to save yourself? From this untoward generation. Sometimes life in and of itself leaves us limp. All of us have experienced, everybody is dealing with something. Let me go ahead and put that out there. Let, let me go ahead. Everybody that is a child of God, Paul said it this way Paul said, When I desire you to do good, evil is always around. Not, not just sometimes, but he said evil is always around. He said, therefore, the good, I planned on doing good, but because evil is around the good that I would do, I find myself not doing. And the evil that I don't want to do, that's what I do, oh wretched man that I am. Paul calls himself a wretched man. Paul, how can you say that about yourself? Look at all the churches that you found. Look at all the, 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 the ministers that you have trained. Look at all the good work that you have been able to do. How can you say that you are a wretched man? Paul said, hey, because I'm, I'm just being honest about the thing. God has brought me from a mighty long way. Mighty long way. But there are some moments in our life when temptation and desire is met with opportunity. I can't say what I won't ever do. Because 30 minutes later, the devil will make me out to be a lie. And the very thing that I said I'd never do again, that's the very thing that I find myself doing. How is it that I can be a child of God and still fall in sin? How is it that I can be a child of God and still fall short? Because you, as a child of God, are not God. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus was the only man that ever walked this earth and did it without sin. That's why the Bible says that we have not an high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but he was in like manner tested just as we are, yet he did it without sin. What is it? He did it without That's sin. Cool. He bore it all. He endured it all. He suffered it all, and he did it without sin. And that's why he is qualified to take our place. Yeah. That is why. He is qualified to stand in our stead to pay a debt he did not owe because we owed a debt that we could not pay. It took sinless blood 
to ratify and bring about a new covenant. He looked, the Bible says, looked throughout the earth. There was not one that was worthy to take the place. So he himself had to come down in the form of a man. He came down and dwelt among us. The Bible said he was born in a manger to sorrow and shame. He wasn't born in a nice hospital, didn't have no nice doctors, no nice attendants to attend to him, but he was born in a manger. Sorrow and shame. Live a sinless life. The Bible says that he did no wrong. Neither was there any guile found in his mouth. But y'all know when they were given the opportunity to choose between Jesus and Barabbas, who was the notorious murderer, they said, Kill Jesus and give us Barabbas. And can you see him now as he's being taken from judgment hall to, to judgment hall? And at one point, they, they beat him so bad. The Bible says that those whips that they were beating him with. And back in the day, these were, they, they weren't whooping like mama and grandma used to give me. Let me give you, let me tell you, let me tell you something. This is a different kind of whooping. It lets us know that the whips that they were used a lot of times was made out of a cow's backside. And in the end of those whips, they would have little tassels. And a lot of times, it would have pieces of glass and other pieces of nails and other sharp objects. So every time they would wrap back and hit the master, it would make an impression into his flesh. So when they would pull back, it would rip out hunks of his skin and his flesh. But the Bible said that he did it, and he did not say a mumbling word. He endured it all so that you could have a right of life. Being having to take his own cross up the Calvary's hill, the man was so weak, the man was so beaten and bloody that he didn't even have the strength to carry the thing by himself. A man had to come along and help him carry his cross. Can you see him now? As he's going up towards his imminent death. Looking around people, people that he fed. I, I'm sure there was a few folk out there in that crowd that ate his fish and his five loaves. I'm sure there was people out there in the crowd that had seen him heal and do many other works. But they all stood by and watched as the master was being taken. Being taken to his imminent death. Even the night before, as Christ knew that his imminent death was approaching, as he prayed in the God, he already knew what Judas was out there doing. He already knew that he had went out to betray him, and Jesus went through it all. He could, as he said, he could have called down legions of angels to come down and rescue him, but he did not. He hung, shed, bled, and died. So since he died for us, can we not make up in our lives, in our minds, to live for him? I want to tell y'all something. I'm sure you've heard it a million times in your life. And you say this might be coming from me, might seem strange, but it's the truth. My great grandmama would say it this way. Time ain't long as it once was. No time my time. Time is winding up. I don't know about y'all, but I pay attention. And I know that every day of our life, we're getting closer and closer to that day that we have to meet God in the day of judgment. Lord Jesus. And as we look around in our world going on right now, I don't know if it does nothing else. It ought to make you want to get just a little bit closer to God. Yes. Yeah. than you are right now. Yeah. I, I don't know about y'all, but when stuff starts happening, it makes, I remember when we were younger and me and my siblings would be in the house or in the yard playing or whatever we were doing. And it would start lightning and thundering. I don't care what we was doing. My grandma would say, y'all get somewhere and sit down. Get somewhere, turn the TV off. Put it out, get somewhere and be still. God is talking. Can I tell y'all right now with what we got going on? God is talking. Get somewhere and sit down and be still. And let God do his work. Let God do his work. And while God is working, you be doing everything that you need to do so that you can have, as the song says, just a closer. Just a closer walk with him. Lord, what I didn't get right on yesterday Help me to be able to learn from it so today I won't be subject to fall to that thing. We're marching. We're walking through the land of the dying, trying to one day get to the land of the living. Y'all, this world is not our home. 
we just sojourners, pilgrims, passers by, traveling through a strange land. And one day, whether you recognize it or not, and y'all just thinking about it, all the, all the people that have passed so far from COVID-19 and you still here. We were no better than any of those people that came to the virus. But God just decided to have a little mercy on us. God just decided to show a little love towards us. And I don't know about y'all, since he decided to think about me, I'm going to think about him. I'm going to serve him with all of my being. I'm going to live for him. I might not be able to sing like coffee, but guess what? I'm going to sing and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. When I pray, I'm going to give him my all. When I serve, I'm going to give him my all. When I preach, I'm going to give him my all because this may be the last time. Maybe the last time. I, I just don't know. Maybe the last time we ever have the opportunity to come together and worship God in spirit and in truth. And I want to be able to say, as the Apostle Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Kids forth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Not only for me, yeah. Come on. but for all those who love oh. Christ yes. and his appearing. I don't care who you are. I don't care how young you are. Makes no difference where you're going and how you're getting there. Young people in the room, teenagers, those of you getting ready to go to college, guess what? You're just now in the dawn of your life. Those 20, 25, and 30, you're in the morning of your life. Those 35, 40, and 45, you're in the afternoon of your life. Those of you 50, 55, 60, and 65, you're in the noonday of your life. Those of you that have surpassed that, it's getting late in the evening. Sun is on its way down. But we used to sing a song, guess what? Leading tree ain't always the first one to fall. You can be doing good, feeling good, in the best of health. But let me tell you, you may be high, you may be low, you may be rich, you may be poor. But when the Lord calls your name got to get away from here. When the Lord calls your name, you got to go. And, and don't let nobody fool you and say, well, you know, when you die, you just cease to exist. Oh, that when you die, that's just it and nothing else happens. You're looking at me right now, but you're not really looking at me. You're just looking at the house that God decided to house me in. There's something in me that makes me me, and that is my spirit. That is my inner being. That is my soul. And once this earthly tabernacle has died and is dissolved, your soul got to go somewhere. It got to go somewhere. It goes back to the God that gave it. Now, the ultimate destination of that soul is up to you. It's up to you. It's up to you. The life that you live and what you do, it's up to you. You are deciding whether or not you're going to spend your turn. Don't let them Catholic folk fool you. Ain't no such thing as a purgatory. Come on, ain't, 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 ain't no middle ground. Ain't, ain't no bad. Well, ain't no well. I can do just enough and I can do a little bit of bad and it might not be so bad. And God will put me in a middle ground. And if I live faithfully in the middle ground, that God will send me to heaven. Ain't nowhere in the Bible where you'll read anything about you get another chance after you leave this life. What you don't get right on this side is over and done with. You don't have the opportunity on the other side to get anything right. That's why the Bible said work while it is yet day. Because the night coming when no man shall be able to do any work. It's getting late in the evening, y'all. The night is coming. Keep your lamp trimmed. Remember, God is on his way. He's on his way, and the Bible said that when he come back, he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. He's coming back. He's coming back, and when he come back, he's going to separate the sheep from the goat. That's why he said, let the wheat and the tear grow up together. And when I come back, he said, I'll do the separate. Don't you worry about doing the separate. When I come back, I'll do the separate. I remember watching Granny in the kitchen. And she used to have a sifter. She don't use it no more, but she used to have a sifter mm -hmm. that she would use. And it was a little tin object, and it had a screen on the inside. And y'all know she put the flour in the top of it, and then she'd get through turning that, turning that thing, and all the good flour would fall through, and all the bad stuff would stay on the top. That's the same way God's going to do it. When yep. God come back, he's going to do some sifting. 
He's going to do some sifting. And God forbid for anybody that is found on the outside. But the Bible lets us know that judgment will begin, first of all, in the household of faith. So guess what? You're going to be first in line. I'm going to be first in line. We are going to be first. He said if judgment began first of all at the household of faith, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? He's coming back for us. And we better make sure that he can tell the difference between us and the world. We better be able to make sure that that he can tell the difference. Between us being a sheep and us being a goat. Because a lot of us, they're claiming that we're real and we're serving God. We ain't really serving God like we're supposed to be serving God. A lot of us only got a Sunday morning Christianity. We all got a Wednesday night mentality. But you got to get to a point in your life where you live every day for Jesus Christ. Where you serve God in everything that you do. Where you get so wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in the word of God. That before you do anything, you ask, would God be pleased? Live your life in such a way that God can use you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Live your life in such a way that God can use you not to bring glory to yourself, but to bring glory and honor unto him. Yes, sir. That's good. Live your life so that God can use you. Stop. Let, let us get out of this mindset, and I'm closing, but let, let us get away from this straddling the fence kind of mentality. Yeah. I can, I can just serve God when it feels good to me, when it feels right to me, when it feels comfortable to me. But then after God blesses me with everything that I wanted and I get up and I'm doing good, I go back out here and I start doing my own thing. You might end up being like the rich man. When Jesus came to me, he said, thou fool. Fool. Jesus called a man fool. Thou fool. This night. Your soul shall be required of thee. I'm sure that man had plans. One day, I'll get it together. One day, I'll get it right. One day, I'm going to get all these right in together. But guess what? That one day never came. We're making plans. and oh, We're making plans on what we're going to do tomorrow and next month and trips we're going to take next year when you don't even What's going to happen on the day that you're living in right now? You don't know how this night is going to end. You don't know how this day is going to end. Since you don't know how it's going to end, it's best that you trust in the man that knows what's going on tomorrow. He's the same God yesterday, today. And he'll be the same God even forevermore. That means he does not change. He is the same. And because he's a God like that, I can trust him. I can put my faith in him and I can serve him. I can stand. Yes, sir. Him. Yes, sir. Why you can. Yes, sir. As, as somebody would say, while the blood Run. is running wrong in your life. Yes, sir. Why you, somebody would say, while you yet got your right mind. Yes, Go ahead and serve yes. God. Because let me tell y'all, and I cannot say it enough, I cannot stress it enough, we're living in crazy times. We're living in times where we do not understand. We don't know what's going on. But God knows. God sees. And let me tell you, God orchestrated this very moment, this very time that we're living in. It's all in the plan of God. Nothing catches God by surprise. Nothing comes in without God knowing about it. Before Satan could ever come in your life and mess with you, he had to ask God first. He had to ask you. How you know that? Back to Joe. God came, the Bible says that the devil came to Job after he had been walking the earth seeking whom he may devour. And he said, I got everybody else. I've been trying. But he said, hey, have you considered? Yes, sir. Come on, preacher. Oh, boy. He said, and the thing about it, y'all, it says that the devil came down with the sons of God. You mean to tell me the sons of God around the devil and they can't even recognize who the devil is? Ooh, you mean to tell me church folk hanging out with the devil? Sons of God came down and present themselves before the Lord, and the Bible says that Satan also came with them. 
and it says it pictures God in the metaphor as a Middle Eastern king, and he's sitting there at the table, and he has these men that are coming in, and they're giving him reports about things that are going on in the land. God gets around to Satan, and he asks Satan, Satan said, well, where you been, Satan? He said, well, I've been walking to and fro, seeking whom I may devour. And before Satan could even give his full response, God said, have you considered? My servant Joe. There's no one on earth that's like him. A man of perfect integrity that fears God and turns away from evil. If the devil were to come to God today, could God say, Have you considered thing? If he came to him today and said, hey, I, I'm trying to get everybody else, I'm trying to try everybody else. Have, have you considered my servant? Because that's what really, I'm, I'm told, that's what really, that's what really Tick say now. It wasn't that he called Joe's name. But he said, have you considered my servant? Joe. So many of us, we striving for titles and we striving for names. I want to be bishop such and such. I want to be apostle such and such. I want to be this. I want to be that. I can be happy just being called a servant of God. Oh, we want so bad to have an ecclesiastical nomenclature. But God says, listen, have you considered my servant? Are you serving God this morning? Don't fool me now. Are you serving God this morning with your whole heart, mind, soul, and body? Or are you just serving him until the pandemic is over? Come on, watch out. Lord have mercy. Are you just serving him until they get a good vaccine? And now that you no longer have a reason to be afraid, you're just going to go back to your old way of living and go back to your old way of life. Let me tell you, let me tell you. God can lift you up. He can lift you up. The Bible says it this way, that he can take your feet out of the miry clay and set them on rock to stand. God will take us out of some messed up situations and circumstances and bring us exactly where we need to be. But we got to get out of the mindset of the lame man. What is that mindset? I'm good right here. <laughs> Don't help me up. Just drop some off to me. Don't try to help me change my situation. Just give me what I want. Give me what I need now. Give me my fix right now so that I can make it through the day and I can repeat my same old thing over and over and over and over and over, and over again. Don't try to change anything in my life, but let me tell you, once God lifts you up, you lift it up. God gets you to where you need to be, but realize that God is not going to be just hovering over you. Stay right here. You do this. Stay right here. Don't move. Stay right here. Don't fall back. Stay right here. Don't go to your way. It's up to you, child of God. Are you appreciative enough of what God has done in your life so far to say, you know what? I ain't left nothing in the club. That's right. I ain't left nothing in the street. I ain't left nothing on the corner. I ain't left nothing over there in a the house that wasn't mine in a bed that wasn't mine. Come on, somebody. I, I ain't left nothing over there. Where God has me at right now is where God would have for me to be. And I want God to use me. But you got to make yourself willing and available to God. Lord, I'm not just available when I got money. I'm broken, penniless, Lord, I'm still available. All right, all right. Things seem strange, and I'm, I'm confused at times. We all get a little confused at times. Y'all, y'all be true, be true. Like, you ain't got to be old to be confused. A lot of us, we get confused sometimes because we're looking around, man, and we just don't understand. Well, we got COVID-19, and now they're talking about we got another strand of COVID out there, and we got this out there, and we got that out there, and we got this. Man, what's going on? Find you somewhere, get somewhere, and sit down. And let God do his word. And he said in a song that we sang, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll 
strong. All men under me. So even during the pandemic, we still got to lift him up. Even during crisis, guess what? We still got to lift him up. And guess what? Then we'll stop worrying about, well, are they going to come to Jesus? And they go, no, no, you don't worry about that. You just lift him up. You lift his name up. And he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. My brother and my sister, maybe not today, maybe it wasn't yesterday, but at some point in your life, you were the lame man the lame man. You were the lame man because all of us at some point, if truth be told, we get stuck Lord, with how things are. Lord, we get stuck with the way that our life is. We got sin in our life and we're just so normal we become so accustomed to it, we don't see any wrong to it. Yep. The Bible talks about that when God gives a person over to a reprobate man. Uh-huh. Where you're doing wrong, you no longer see any, any, any wrong in that's okay with it. And a lot of us sometimes we get in those moments and if, you, if, you don't, if you're not careful, you'll get stuck, as I say, in the limping state. you get stuck there. I'm alright. I'm okay. Coming to church and we dressing it up. Well, folk really don't know that I'm, I'm a house of cards just about to fall down. Folk really don't know what I, I'm dealing with on that. And y'all know, we, you know, you know some Sundays are, are some good costume days. Yes, yeah. yeah. sir, David said, and I promise you, David, David said it like this, thou desirest not sacrifices, else I would give thee. The only thing acceptable to God, he says, is a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Such, O oh God, you will not despise. Here it is, when we come to Jesus, we want to put on our best face. We want to put on our best outfit. Get ourselves prepared as to if we have some type of image that we have to give over to God so that we'll look like what we're actually not. When we forget that He is the all seeing eye that is watching over us, He sees every move that you make, every step that you take, every breath that you take. There is not a bird that falls to the ground. That's right. He don't know about it. He sees you. Therefore, you have no need to try to fix yourself up, get yourself dressed up before you come to him. God meant for you to come to him broken. He meant for you to come to him crushed in your spirit, worried. That's exactly how God meant for you to come to him. So why not come? Maybe somebody watching here on this morning, you say, preacher, that's me. I'm at that place right now. I'm stuck. My faith is a light has grown just a little bit dim because of everything that's going on. But child of God, I want to let you know, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer, and he's the solution to every problem that would ever cross the horizon of our mind. He is the answer. He has all power. He can change anything. He can change anybody. Trust in him. Depend on him today if you need him, if you desire him, if you, if you have never come in contact with Christ, if you are yet walking around in alien sin and you have not had an opportunity to fellowship with Christ. Your sins have not yet been washed away by the blood of the Lamb. You are not a member of the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. Preacher, what do you mean, church of Christ? Well, let me tell you, if you are a man, if you're watching this, before you married your wife, she had a different name than she got right now. But when she became your wife, she took on the name that you had. Maybe she was a Smith, but now she is a Rayleigh, or maybe now she's a Walker, or maybe she's Williams, but she had a different name before y'all came into union together. But now that she is your bride, now that she is yours, she has taken on your name. If I get your driver's license and I get pulled over by the police and I try to show them your driver's license with your name and with your face, I'm probably going to end up going to jail. I'm going to get a ticket. I'm going to get something because I am trying to present something that does not belong to me. Well, if we can understand it in those senses, how can we not understand it when it comes to the body of Christ? If Christ says that the church is his bride, if he says that he purchased it with his own blood, and he says that the, the, the bride, it is the bride of Christ, it is his church, then why not the church wear well, his name? So what y'all telling me, if you're telling me that every church is just as good as another, you're telling me that God got more than one wife. No, sir. Oh, watch out. Oh, watch out. Pray, 
It's tight, but it's right. That's what, you're, that's what you're telling me. If you're telling me that every church is just as good as another, you're telling me he got more than one wife. He ain't got but one. And he's coming back for that one. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? Will you be ready when he comes back? I, I pray that we're getting ready. I pray we're getting ready. I know I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready for that day. When it's going to come, we don't know. If God decided right now to call everything up, guess what? He could do that. It could happen at this very moment. Yes. And if it happens, I want to be able to say, Lord, as it says on Star Trek, beam me up, Scotty. I'm ready. I'm ready, Lord. If you're here today, if you're here today, you desire salvation. Maybe you're watching, you desire salvation. I want to let you know salvation is available to you today. It, it is a free gift that is offered to us, but it came at a mighty high price. It costs our Savior. Christ. It cost him his life. We talked about how he hung, shed, bled, and died on Calvary's cross for your sins and mine. He lets us know in John chapter 14, he said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, you may be also. Whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said, Father, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, I am. You're looking at the way. You're looking at the truth. You're looking at the life. No man can come to the Father except he come by me. We're talking about that. God got a way. You can't go over. God got a way. You can't go under. God got a way. You can't go around it. You got to come in at the door. What is the door? It talks about it in the Bible. Let's know that baptism don't now save us. Baptism is what puts us into the body of Christ. We read it in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 38. He said, repent. After Peter had just got through preaching the first gospel sermon, those men were pricked in their heart and they asked Peter and the rest of the apostles. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. So how you gonna join something? God said you gotta be added. How you gonna join something? That God said you got to be added to. You join a rotary club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You join a social club. Yes, sir. You join a Toastmasters club. But you got to be born into this thing. You got to be born into Christ. Nicodemus said, what you talking about? How can a man, when he is old, be born again? Must I enter a second time into my mother's womb? No, Nicodemus. You must be born again. Of water and of the Spirit. Well, preacher, I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. I'm speaking in tongues. I got the Holy Ghost. I got the Spirit. I ain't been baptized. How you got that? You mean to tell me you're 2,000 years old? What you mean, preacher? The only time that ever happened was at the house of Cornelius. And we talk about that, how, how that only happened because you still had the Jews and even Peter himself who was still walking around here not feeling that Gentile were to be accepted into the body of Christ. So God did that as a sign to the Jews that Gentiles were also to be included into the body of Christ. But even after God poured out the Spirit upon them, they still had to be baptized. How is it possible yeah, yeah. that you got the spirit, come on, but you ain't yet had the water? Come on, come on. For any woman that has ever given birth before the baby comes, you know water comes. Yeah. Right. Because it is a sign that new life is getting ready to enter into the world. What did each Paul tell us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17? That if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. While you're down in the water, God performs a, a quicker procedure on you. God takes all of that old filth and that old garbage and that old trash. He takes the old you and just throw it, do it with it, gives you a clean start, gives you a clean slate, gives you everything that you need to sustain and survive in this life, but it's up to you yeah, yeah. to remain faithful unto death and he'll give you a crown of life that will never fade away. Amen. The gospel has not changed. It's still the same. Man changes. Every day man comes up with new interpretations, yes. new ideologies, New patterns, new methods. 
But God has not changed. He's saying yesterday, today, he'll be the same even forevermore. He said in his word, heaven and earth will pass away. Yeah. But my word mm -hmm. is going to stand forever. As a matter of fact, Elder Dixon, that word is what's going to judge us in the last day. So guess what? If you ain't going to study for no other reason, study so that you can know what to do and what not to do so that when you stand before him, well done. Well done! Well done. I, I can't eat no rouse steak, but I can eat one well done. Well done! Good and faithful. You were faithful over a few things. What do you mean? You weren't perfect. You didn't get it right all the time. Right. You were faithful over a few. You might have failed 60 percent, but you were faithful over the 40 percent. Faithful over a few things. Come on yeah. up a little higher. Come on up. Come on up a little higher. Enter into the joys of life. I will make you a ruler over anything. Can y'all imagine? I'm, getting, I'm, I'm just happy, y'all. Y'all got an excuse me. Can you, can, you just, can you just imagine walking down streets? Pay with gold. Come on. You're walking down looking at the walls made of jasper. Yes, Ooh, you can't, you've been, look, the sun beaming off the gate made of pearl, just about to blind, you know what I mean? Yeah. Every day, Sister Reed, howdy, howdy. <laughs> Ever goodbye. Yes, yeah. Ain't no such thing as Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Every day going to be Sunday. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. And the Sabbath will have no end. We just going to be singing. Yes, sir. Oh, praising. Oh, all day long. Guess what? It's going to be white folk there. Yeah. It's going to be black folk there. Yeah. Red, yellow, black, white. Gonna be, and all of God's children. All of those that have obeyed the gospel. Yeah. 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 And have remained faithful unto death. Yes, sir. Yeah. Be there. Oh, what a time. What a time it's going to be. Y'all just imagine, no more snap, crackle, and pop when you get out of bed in the morning. No more, no more, no more doctor's appointments. No more having to take a pill for the food to go down right. Having to take a pill for the food to digest right. Having to take a pill for this and that. You ain't got to worry about none of that. The Bible says that we'll be given celestial bodies. Jesus will ravage your body. Live forever. Amen. Amen. We Thank deal with stuff. We say, man, I've been dealing with this thing for so long. But eternity is going to last forever. Land of the living. No such thing as a Lord have mercy. Can I, can I say something? I'm going to say this and I'm going to close. If you don't enjoy singing and praising down here, Boy, you better know, Lord have mercy. Oh, you're going to be in trouble when you get up there. If you don't know, how to love down here, you're going to have a hard time trying to get up there. If you don't learn how to get along down here, you're going to have a hard time up there because every day it's just going to be your brothers and sisters. Singing and praising, yeah. having a good time in the Lord Jesus Christ. My brother, my sister, maybe you're watching this this morning, where you are. I see we got people from Alabama, we got Montgomery, we got Birmingham, we got Fort Walton Beach, Florida, we got Louisville, Kentucky, we got folk in Texas, we got some people from everywhere that are watching this morning. Let me tell you, have to be here in Jacksonville, Florida in order for us to be able to assist you with you receiving salvation this morning. We know people from here to Timbuktu. I'm sure there's somebody in your city that we'll be able to contact and they'll be able to help you on today. Not tomorrow, but today. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We want you to receive salvation on today. How do I receive salvation? I'm, 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 I'm helping you understand that you come by hearing his word. What is his word? The gospel. What is the gospel? The death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Christ. After you hear the gospel, one must believe. He said, except you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sin. After belief, you repent of your sins. What is repentance? I've changed my mind. It shows up in my actions. It shows up in my deeds. After repentance, with your mouth, you confess the sweetest name known in the mortal tongue. And that is not Buddha, not Muhammad, not anybody else. But Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And after you confess with out the sweetest name known the mortal tongue. It is at that point that you are willing to be baptized for the remission of your sin. Have your sins washed away, eradicated, done away with. Never come up before you in this life and neither the life that is to come and then you can join the church. No, sir. No, sir. All right. All right. Just, I'm making sure y'all paying attention. 
and the Lord himself will add you to his body. Maybe you're already a Christian, you're watching this this morning, and you're just standing in the need of prayer. If you feel comfortable, go ahead and comment, let us know the prayer request that you have. If you don't feel comfortable making it public, uh, message us, let us know whatever it is that you're standing in the need of prayer. Because let me tell you something, prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. If don't nothing else work, prayer changes. Prayer change in God's time, and prayer will change it. And if you're watching this morning, and maybe you're here, if you're subject to the invitation, don't put off today for what you plan on doing tomorrow. This may be the last opportunity that you ever have to hear God's man give you, extend to you God's invitation. Don't let it pass you by. Savior, do not let it pass me by. If you're subject to the invitation, we beg and we plead. Why not? Right now, come to Jesus as together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Jesus rose with the power in 